Hello and welcome to the MHG podcast once again. I am Bradley and joining me this week, he's not had any lockdown parties. He's not to to have a redacted report done about him. He's not even caused an issue with Spotify. He's an all-round good guy. It's Stu. How are you doing, Stu? I'm all right, yeah, but you don't know I haven't done any of those things. That's just what you're assuming. But, you know, there ain't no party like a number 10 party, so... (laughs) Well, number 10 party's a surprise cake ambush. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not a party. Sorry. Yeah. Give Johnson the the Boris of the doubt. I was going to say that. The Boris of the doubt. Would that work? It's like... (laughs) Would that have worked for us going, well, do you know what? It's my house. I didn't know there was like 30-odd people in my house having yeah. a party. And it was a surprise. It just wouldn't I know. work. I know, right? If you used ice hockey rules, right, in ice hockey rules, you can accidentally hit someone in the face with a stick, right? Accidentally. And you still get a two-minute penalty for high yeah. sticking because it, you're responsible for that stick. Yes. Surely that should be the same when it comes to parties in your house. It's your house. You're responsible. Well, of course. And the funny thing is that in every area of life, you know, whether it's parenting or whether it's school or whether it's, you know, a job and em- that you're employed in, the rules are always the same. You're the one who's, you've got to have accountability for these things. It's, so it's like yeah. you either start them as a positive thing or you stop them because it's a negative thing. Either way, it's on you. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's bananas. But I just, I can't... Im- the fact that he's still there after all this pressure, to me, is unbelievable. I can't can't get my head around it. Because he's Teflon. He is Teflon. Even Trump hasn't lasted. I know. I know. But yeah, it's weird. And then, you know, NFTs, Joe Rogan. It's all fun and games in, in, the, in the political world at the moment. It is, yeah. It's, it's really easy for me because I'm just like... No, I'm not watching that. No, not listening to them. No, can't be bothered with that. <laughs> it's just, they're all scum to me. So I stay well clear. Yeah, it's why I'd be just heading to pinball tables, mainly. Um, it's, it's a lovely new obsession. Yes. Do you know what else isn't political, but can be political? It depends on the game. Games? <laughs> video games. Absolutely. So let's talk about video games, Joe. Yeah, let's do it. You go first. Yeah, so the first one I've been playing, I'll start like I normally do with the the retro-ish thing that I've been playing first, and that one is Dynamite Heady. So wow. this is a Meg, yeah, it's a Meg Drive game from 1994, for those who don't know. And oh, it's just, it's fantastic. I've played it before, but it's one of those that I'm like, it's so far in the past and my memory's so crap, and oh, is it peas on Tuesday sort of situation that I never know whether I've played them through or whether i've just touched on them i played it at a mate's house or, or even just whatever, seen it you know. somewhere <laughs> yeah yeah it was on yeah games master and i just saw it there but i think you know i've, I've definitely had a, a blooming good go of it in the past but never played it you know properly oh, it's just brilliant it's unbelievable to look at like really unbelievable to look at and i know because i've been playing a lot of mega drive games and the early ones look the, the how you remember the Mega Drive to be. So you're kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's quite pleasant. You know, it didn't look as good as the arcades, but it was still nice. And then you play Dynamite Heady, which was, you know, towards the end of the Mega Drive's life. And it's just amazing. It's got tons of parallax. It's got, like, fake 3D that they've done with with sprites. You know, it's got gigantic sprites as well. It's, It's just unbelievable to look at uh, it's like a, a, a moving cartoon it, it, it reminds me of a cross between sort of Cuphead and Parodius yes and it's by Treasure who were ex-Konami staff so that's not surprising with the whole Parodius thing you know yeah. um, and it's a bit meta as well one of the earliest meta video games really I guess because it's got it's all reference that you're it's not real what you're doing. It's like Act 1, Act 2, and it's got like stage sets that you're playing against and stuff like that. Just like Mario. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's just uh, it's just a wonderful game. Bright, colourful, really good controls. It's just, uh, most of it's a platformer where you throw your head to grab stuff and then you, you know, a bit like Captain Commando, but you can get different heads that do have weapon abilities or different flying abilities and stuff. And there are even like side-scrolling sections and that bit sort of reminds you of uh, Yoshi's story a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a fantastic game and it's an all-time classic and probably an all-time great. 
Yeah, no, I hundred percent agree with you. It's um, I, I remember getting this out of a shop called I think that's it, that's entertainment a, a while back. Well, obviously, a while back, back at like in the Mega Drive days, and being told, oh, this is you know, it's a, it's not as good as Sonic, but it's a bit like Sonic if you like Sonic. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll give that a go. And yeah, I remember really enjoying it. And the sixteen-bit games have aged better than I think any other generation has. Yes. And Dynamite Heady, I remember when I first played Rayman on the PlayStation, that looked, it didn't look, look, there's something about the original Rayman that reminded me of Dynamite Heady, and it felt like the developers of Rayman had played Dynamite Heady, realised it probably wasn't as popular as what people might think, and could get away with making something in that vein. Um, when in, in, in the days where everything had to be you, uh, like, like especially when you're going on the PlayStation, but yeah, Dynamite Heady, it looks beautiful, it plays wonderfully as well, and it is probably one of the more lesser known of the mascot platformers, and it doesn't deserve to be absolutely, yeah. It's just probably a complete victim of being out right at the end of the Mega Drive's life and right at the beginning of the PlayStations. And yeah. who was going to go out and spend 40 quid? back in 1994 money which would be about like 70 quid today on yeah. dynamite heady when you know you're desperately trying to save up for ridge racer and you know alien trilogy and wipe out on your <laughs> on your brand new playstation and, and rightly so because 3d dead i mean it's hard for people to gather what it meant going 3d at the time yeah it is uh, so you know it's I, i'm as guilty as anyone going oh, i don't want these 2d games yeah yeah well precisely <laughs> well it's got to be Something that's gorgeous, but it's kind of, it's it's old, you know, it's running on old hardware versus something that you've absolutely never seen before in your life. You know, it's an absolute, uh, it's a complete wash. You're never going to choose yeah. the older thing, even if it is, you know, Dynamite Heady is so many orders of magnitude better than Alien Trilogy. It's not even funny. Yeah. Or, you know, Battle Arena, Tosh and Den, or any of the stuff that came, Die Hard yeah, Trilogy. came out. Mm-hmm. Die Hard Trilogy. Die Hard Trilogy. But um, one of those that, yeah, it's worth going back to in retrospect and going... God, this this is fantastic. And also, the final thing I have to say on it yep. is it when you compare it against SNES stuff, it actually holds its own like yes. some of the later Mega Drive ones do. Because it was really weird going back to playing the SNES a few weeks, a couple of months back, and then coming onto the Mega Drive later. I couldn't believe how big a gap there was between like early SNES stuff and early Mega Drive stuff. And the gap definitely narrowed because they put a lot of effort into the Mega Drive development but early days it was night and day you know I mean Mario World yeah. was, was a release title and F-Zero and they both blow away anything that came out on the MD so it was nice to see that you know over the course of the Mega Drive Mega Drive's life they just they got they wrung so much out of it yeah oh yeah definitely I, I think what you've got with all this now, I think what we've got to say is a testament to what the 16-bit era was. When you look at, if I was to name you the, say to you, name me, what's the best modern Sonic? The answer is Sonic Mania. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that comes a lot of it down to they nailed the mechanics in the early days, and you know it visually still looks amazing. The old Sonic games, original Sonic One, Two, Three, still look amazing. Sonic Mania looks great. Whereas you look at the three D Sonics or even some of the other attempts at at two D Sonic with three D elements and snazzy graphics, don't quite hold up. Um, there's a reason why Super Mario Maker went for the sixteen and eight bit aesthetics rather than trying to go all in on 3D and stuff like that because they held up so much better. And I'd love to see, I would honestly, honestly love to see a bunch of studios get together, work it out in some way and do a 16-bit maker of take like all the popular characters and games from different 16-bit era games. So Earthworm Jim, Dynamite Heady, you know, uh, Rogue James Pond, all, all those sort of characters. Take the assets from their games. Obviously, HD them up a bit so you know, they do work on big TVs and let people have at it within these creations and make, you know, like just levels of everything. So use, you know, James Pond assets to make a Dynamite Heady game or, you know, you know I know Nintendo and like, Sega probably wouldn't get into bed with something like this, but being able to put Earthworm Jim into, you know, Super Mario World like levels and stuff like that and changing all the mechanics up based on the characters or what have you because i I think those those games those 16 bit eras are so interchangeable in terms of the overall mechanics are 
based around the same core concepts. It's just what they've done with them. But I think you could do stuff that's really cool with them that you couldn't do, I think, with any other genre in any other era of gaming. Yeah, yeah. I You can go to the community for some of that sort of stuff. There's, you know, ROM hacks and the like. Yeah. And I'm not sure, I don't think there's one that blends the characters. But, oh, well, they're actually, funnily enough, I was watching a video yesterday on YouTube recommending Sonic hacks. And I think one of the last ones was uh, Gex the Gecko in, in a Sonic world, and it played completely different. So yeah. that sort of thing does exist. But, yeah, Mugen, where it's fighting games, does that where it mixes all of the fighting game characters of the era into different you know into one great big game and that's a really brilliant thing as well so yes it's lovely it would be lovely to see that especially as a lot of them could be interchangeable in each other's worlds yeah yeah there's so many little things you could do to set up like different types of creator competitions and and so on and so forth and i've always even from when i was younger going oh i'd love to see like sonic in a mario game or mario in a sonic game that'll never happen though obviously because you know (laughs) sacred nintendo can't work together (laughs) Um, how naive we were yeah i know maybe put them together in a game about you know the, the show they can do i mean they do the olympic stuff which is fine, I, I like that. But Smash Brothers shows that I think the next Mario Kart or the next Mario Maker, Nintendo have got the clout. Maybe get together with Microsoft and go, look, let's fund this. Let's create the next Smash Brothers that's not a fighting game because you've got, the genres are there. You could do it. Yeah. Well, what have you been playing? And so, very quick one from me, and I said here's a quick one first. Um, I've been playing some Card Fighters Clash. Nice, nice. On the Switch. Got sent a code for, it's one of the, the I, I think it comes under the Neo Geo Classics or whatever it is, but it's on that brand of re-release Neo Geo Pocket Colour games that um, got released on the Switch. Now, I had been playing this via emulator because I, I had this, when I had a Neo Geo Pocket Colour, I had a, a Pocket Fighters Clash and I really enjoyed it. No clue what I was doing, but I just really enjoyed it. Uh, pretty much the same for me. I still don't have a clue what I'm doing. Um, I'm probably not be maxing my strategies properly or or anything like that, but I don't care. But it's it's just like the Metal Slug classics that they did that was on the Neo Geo. Perfect recreations, absolutely spot on. They've done you know not much to it, and it's priced accordingly. It's not overly expensive, and it's got the brilliant emulator options. So you've got shaders and overlays. You can have like I I, I like to put on my carbon fiber Neo Geo uh, pocket. Um, skin on it because that's what I had um, and then you can do that you can have it really small or you can zoom the screen in and all stuff like that or you can just turn it off and have it full screen really good emulation options it's a it's a card battling game you know like Yu-Gi-Oh and um, uh, Magic and stuff like that and the yeah. Pokemon card games it's just one of them except with um, you know a Capcom the OGO type characters from the fighting games and stuff like that it's just really really good it's a lot more simplistic than a lot of them that you get which i really like and as i said i don't understand the big max inside of it and i probably should have better strategies but like a lot of games of that era i played against the ai and that's all i had to beat so you could cheese it where you had to and and what have you and i just i just like picking it up and just popping it on it's just fun yes it is yeah i really enjoy playing that i've I, can't, I think I played it on emulator. I don't. I didn't play it on my Neo Geo Pocket Color because it was too hard to get hold of. Um, just you know, and I I got rid of the Pocket Color before I got before they started bringing out the, the multi cart things, yes. which is how I've been playing Dynamite Header. You know, but yeah, no, it's a really it's a really good fun game, and I'm not even into that card game oh. type thing very much. But it's yeah, it's a laugh. Yeah, but it's the game that got me interested in card games. If it wasn't for Card Fighters Pocket Clash. That's the thing, the titles get wrong. It's it's got more than four words in it, so I get my head mixed up on what the actual titles are. If it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't have even given the likes of Slay the Spire or Monster Train the time of day. Yeah. Uh, because I looked at it and gone, yeah, no, no, I can't do that. But it showed me, like, learning how... It doesn't matter how in-depth the games are. If you can learn the core concepts, you can get through these games. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah, brilliant game. Lovely. So, what's next for you? Well, as promised last week, which I forgot to do last week, um, <laughs> but I promised I would do this week, I've been playing Windjammers 2. And so that's the, the sequel to the the original on the Neo Geo AES and MVS, the arcade yep. version. And uh, yeah, it's really good. I mean, the title is, is re- it's really funny. It's like, you know when you 
you make a joke about a sport and you make up like a stupid name for it, like calling footy like kick sphere or something like that. <laughs> and it's like, well, what would you call an ultimate frisbee? Oh, wind jammers, wind jammers. It always makes me laugh anyway. But um, yeah, yeah, it's basically ultimate frisbee type thing with special powers and special moves, and it's very sort of simple to control. Although they've added more control options to it than there were in the original so there's now like i can't you see it's a while since i played the original but this one has got like a dedicated drop button a slap button which is just kind of like if you time it right you can hit back uh the frisbee like really quickly uh, but your timing has to be right on instead of catching it and then throwing it you got a throw button you got a jump button you got a special move button which sounds like a lot but it isn't it, it works really really well and it's just it adds it keeps all of the stuff from the original but adds a load of nice little gameplay tweaks that don't make it particularly more complicated but you know keep that level of fun of an invented sport uh, right in there and making it approachable and it looks lovely i was really pleasantly surprised it kind of looks a bit like streets of rage 4 it's got that similar kind of uh, design aesthetic it looks like cut out kind of paper drawings rather than uh, being completely slick animation and stuff like that and not rounded you know it kind of looks cartoonish and and comic booky and yeah it's really good fun uh, it's on game pass you, you can't really lose having a go of it to be honest no nope, it feels like a traditional arcade game yeah yeah but we're taking out the the part of the arcade game that we spoke about before where it just wants you to put money in so it makes it yeah. difficult it's managed to balance it really really well for what is a, a newer generation and in all the right ways it's, yeah I've, I've played it a few times I used it to try out some of the Xbox X Cloud stuff uh, but it worked really well on there I've got it locally on the PC via Game Pass uh, yeah it's a, just a really fun game and I'll probably pick it up on Switch when it's on sale as well I'm, I'm really enjoying it yeah, it's it's one that I think I may well pay for on Switch. Yeah. Because it, it really does deserve to be on a handheld for the dip-in and dip-out experience. So, yeah. I'll tell you how good it is, It like with a description of something else. So I've decided to have a quick look back at um, Disc Jam, which came out, I want to say, four years ago. Oh, okay. So there was a period, I think you had um, like Jeff Gerstmann at Giant Bob, when he cared, back when Giant Bob was still caring about what they was doing. Um, was he was speaking about wind jammers and it seemed to get really popular after he was going on about it and played some on the Unprofessional Friday. Then this jam came out and that was being played and I played this jam and I was like, oh, this is really good. Yeah, it does remind me of wind jammers. And it was like, part of me was going, just like trying to make excuses, going, well, I've not played wind jammers for ages and, you know, it scratches that itch. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Do you know what? It's good. And then I kind of, just bounced off it for other stuff and never really went back. Played with Jammers 2, and with Jammers 2, it's essentially just with Jammers evolved, which is all it needed to be. And I tried this jab again, and dear God, it's night and day. Right. Uh, with Jammers is, you know, it's your Ferrari, and, you know, this jab is. Yeah, your 1980s, 1990s style Skoda where they're functional, but no one really wants one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad to hear that, that it, it kind of has that appeal. Uh, well, Windjammers does, not the other yeah. one. Because, um, yeah, I was really impressed. And I think that if it's got that level of accessibility, fun, you know, it's bright and it's it's a little bit kind of over the top, but with good underlying mechanics, which it has got, it's going to reach a big audience. And, of course, the first one never did because it was... <laughs> it was only ever available in the arcade or if you owned an AES and nobody did because they cost the same amount as a house <laughs> yeah so. yeah if you can afford an arcade you can afford wind jammers otherwise yeah. nah um, yeah. but what what I like about wind jammers and especially the UN I'm glad they went with this it reminds me of the sort of characters you like talking about like the 16 bit with yours talking about card fighters it reminds me of the sort of characters you saw in like Capcom and the OGO uh, style arcade cabinets. Um, so your Street Fighter, your Killer the Fighters, 
super sidekicks, those sort of um, like games. It's like they look like that, and they all feel like you look at it, and just go, yeah, I know what that's come from. Yes, they they feel part of that family, and it's 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 warm and comforted. Yeah, which is as it should be, really, because you can't dismiss the sort of nostalgia factor about it because. Yeah, would it have got made and would it have been as good if it didn't have the originator? Yeah, probably not. And would it have looked the way that it does? You know, again, oh, it's doubtful. So yeah, no, you've got to you got to think. Well, it wouldn't if it wasn't propped up on the shoulders of people who remembered it from their childhood, or wanted to have it in their childhood who couldn't buy the original in their childhood. Then you probably wouldn't have the game at all. So yeah, it, it's worked out well for everyone in the end of it. Yeah, uh, just a couple of last points for me to pick out with, with Jammers 2. One, it took forever to come out, and I'm pleased about that, because it means, from what I could tell, no crunch. There was no pressure yeah. to get it done. Um, so, good. And secondly, what feels like's happened with it, if it feels like, at some point, they've probably tried adding lots and lots of different mechanics or whatever to the game, and someone's gone in and gone, scale that back a bit. And that's what they've done. Yeah. Because it, uh, there are points where I'm playing it and go, this feels like it wants to do more, but doesn't in a in a good way. So it, it feels like instead of going, look, here's press this button and this button and this button to do this combo, it's gone, actually, why do we need five buttons to do this combo when just one will do? And it's then trying to find ways of making those combos or those special moves easier to do. So, yeah, really like what they've done with it. I like the time they've taken. The game came out when it was good and ready. It plays really well. It doesn't feel like it needs patching up to the eyeballs. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I'm glad you're enjoying it as well because I say I've not played it as much as I want to yet because I've been catching up with 18 months worth of um, games that I've been stockpiling. Uh, but we'll have a competition. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll have a we'll have a friendly MHG competition next week sometime and then we'll get it recorded and popped up. Yeah, cool. Yay. I'll probably get battered, but that's fine. I don't mind being the chump. Uh, I'm blind, so. <laughs> well, there is that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you know a day when my vision's really not good, and you can choose that day to battle me. Awesome. <laughs> yes. I wish more people would <laughs> pick their worst days for me to compete against them. And they, and they go, oh crap! I still lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just to wait for it. I will. I it wasn't will. meant to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But anyway, from the, the the bright, bright colours and beaches and stadiums of Windjammers 2, we're going down into the dark, murky depths of Hidden Deep on the PC. Oh. Uh, now, Hidden Deep is it's an early access game at the moment, but you, you obviously you can go and pick it up. It's from Cogwheel Software and produced by Daedalic Entertainment. Now, Daedalic Entertainment, I find, is a weird one. They, they say either I have really good games or they have what feels like cheap cash-ins or not even like uh, asset flips at times. They're, uh, they're just a really odd publishing arm. Yeah. So I kind of took this off a bit of trepidation. Uh, but all I can say is it's as though these guys who have made this were listening in to the pitch meeting for Metroid Dread but didn't get to listen to all of what Metroid Dread was, went off and made their own thing and did something really good with it. All right. Um, so what what you've got here, it's, it's a, like, so basically you're in this almost like this like underground, sub, sub-aquatic, mining colony type thing. You, you're going down, and you're, you're going through all like the cave systems and stuff like that. And you've got to work your way through uh, to do various different missions. And then there's like these weird alien style enemies that are in there that stalk you and attack you. And like, like they use the shadows really well and come out of you from nowhere. And it's kind of, there's an influence of it, I would say, from like late 70s sci fi stuff. Um, so, aliens, the lesser known, the deep, those kind of things. And uh, what's, what's that one with the weird water effects? The Abyss. The Abyss, yeah. Uh, like, elements of that in there as well. Gaming point of view, so yeah, Metroid Dread, some Half-Life in there as well. And it's, it's, it's a really sort of, like, atmospheric... I don't want to say Metroid failure because it's not a Metroid failure, but it's kind of got that feel to the aesthetics and how you move around and, and things like that, but it's not a Metroid failure. 
But yeah, you, you you go in there and sort of like you go in, you get you feel like you're being stalked at all times while you're trying to carry out these missions and move through the levels. Um, you kind of you're moving with your left stick and you aim with it as well. You've got to be almost like good with your shots. You've got to time your sh- like your, your gunshots well, otherwise you know you're you're quickly going to be pounced upon by these enemies. You use like repelling ropes to get down into darker areas and further deeper. And you just go down, further down. And it's just everything about the atmosphere within this game is what does it. If you just take the atmosphere out of this game, you pretty much have bog standard platformer with shooting in it. But they slowed things down. This is what they've done really well. They slowed things down so you feel like you're on edge all the time and that you're not moving quick enough to be able to just get through it. But not slow enough that you feel bored or you're kept in. They've got the pacing balance of this game spot on. And it's good to see someone going, instead of going, let's go up, let's go down instead and do this thing down in the depths. And yeah, I'm yeah. probably a couple of hours into it. There's more to come. There's, it's an early access game. But and the part of their roadmap says there's like going to be more levels, more monsters and all stuff like that added to it. A level editor. More le- level editors, please. I think that's a great way of keeping a game going. Uh, but yeah, really, really, really good. Animations are really good. There's kind of a... Um, I want to say a flashback influence to it. It doesn't look or play like flashback, but the animations of the character movement has that natural feel to it that flashback had. But yeah, really, 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 I don't want to say a good time because it's um, it's so tense that it's not a good time, but it's, it's well worth checking out. No, oh, yeah, sounds okay. Visually, it doesn't look like much, but no. Uh, but there's bits like you. I mean, you operate vehicles and stuff in it as well. So, I mean, I suppose in a way, if like, one, the designs of the vehicles, like they're like big yellow hulking things that you can use and control, remind me a little bit of um, the 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 loader in uh, Alien, in Aliens. Yeah, but uh, it kind of reminds me of that. They're definitely wearing their their influences on their sleeves without going full on. This is what it is. Yeah. And you know, it's co op as well. There's co op opportunities as well. I've only done single player, but there's so many levels to this game. But honestly, it's really, really like I'm not, not going too far into it because it's early access. So I want to play the full experience. And I don't like going back when I've got I've put six, seven, eight hours into this game and feel like I've completed it. And now I've got to go back and do it all again. So I've kind of just like played it and just tried to play it with my brain switched off. So I'm not taking it in. But oh, it is. Really, like, uh, some of the animations in it, the atmosphere, just uh, what make this game and show how important that stuff is. Very good. Yeah, sounds good. I'll check, um, again, check it out, I think. Yep. Any more from you, or shall I do my last one? No, go ahead, because I've been playing a bunch of Mega Drive stuff, but I'll keep it, you know, I'll, I'll spread it out over several weeks just so I don't bore people. Or we'll do a mega special. Possibly. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so the other one I've been playing, is for me more of a Metroidvania, and again, it's just a nice. It shows how much you can do with like just certain genres of games. So this one's called Dungeon Munchies, which is Metroidvania-ish, RPG-ish, uh, pixel graphics, action, adventure, RP. I say RPG stuff. Almost feels a bit Dead Cells in places, but it's it's hookies. You go through the levels and you kind of collect things like food and other bits and you make, you get different power-ups by cooking different recipes or mixing together different items into like into different things and that gives you different boosts or weapons and power-ups and um, buffs and debuffs and all that. And then you sort of work your way through the level based on all of these. And yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's just an interesting game again. It's aesthetic is like you're like some kind of weird demony type thing. This is, what, this, is, this, is, this is why I'd never get the Games Master gig or anything like that, my way of describing stuff. Uh, but you're <laughs> kind of like put on a thing by this like necro chef who's called Simmer. They've really led into the, the naming conventions on, on, in this game. But, Sounds yeah, like it. You go through and then like you go there, you come against these checkpoints which are done like food trucks or market stalls and you go, right, this is what, I'll mix these together and this is what I've got. Um, and you go through, try your different combinations, you, you're killing random enemies as you go and then there's big bosses and mid bosses and, and all the tr- usual trappings that you get 
in a dead cells, a hollow night, uh, you know, Metroid, Metroid, uh, Castlevania, all those sort of things. But it just, yeah, it blends together really well. I, I wouldn't say it's a best in genre by any stretch of the imagination. But again, if you like those sort of games, it scratches that itch. Bit, bit like Neon Abyss did. It scratched that itch. It clearly wasn't Dead Cells. It was clearly trying to have a bit of Dead Cells to it. But it was fine for what it is. And this is pretty much the same. Came out a couple of years ago on PC. But it's recently just been released on Switch. Which is where I'm playing it. And in terms of pick up and play as and when Switch fodder. Without sounding like go for the usual cliche. Perfect for Switch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, again, I, I think I've played what I consider just three just lovely experiences, lovely games. I mean, dark and nice. weird and stuff like that, but just great times with all of them. Sweet. Yeah, no, it's a nice one to get on a roll like that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And the yeah. combat works really well. So uh, uh, just to point out with this one, the combat works really well. And I think, again, this is the sort of game where, yeah, the movement around the level is all great, but the, the if you're going to have bosses along with all this stuff, the combat, you've got to feel in control, especially when you're adding huge numbers of combinations of weapons that you can do. If you don't get that combat right, you fail the game. But yeah, the combat in this feels really good as well. It feels fluid. It can feel brutal at times. Um, and you, you know, you, you do get your favourite weapons, but you also look forward to trying new weapons all the time. So you've got some mid-range weapons, some close-up weapons, some distance weapons. And yeah, does really well i'd seen some people talk about it in terms of like comparing it to cuphead and it that's a really weird comparison to me does you can't compare it to cuphead in any way shape or form dead cells yes cuphead no give it a go give it a go it's, it's I, I like it yeah it looks nice i might well yeah. pick that one up add it to the list add it to the list or speak to uncle <laughs> Fields if we can get it on game pass oh, that would be nice because apparently there's too many games. That's oh, what, I saw this, up. yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, crazy. What's his name? He's a developer, isn't he? You said it. What's his name? Can't remember. There's not too many games. Do I want to give him credence? Who was it? There we go. I'm checking my notes. Jeff Vogel. That was it. That's right. Uh, no, there's not too many games. You don't have to play them all. Um, I know that's hypocritical coming from me. Uh, but you don't have to play them all. And you can tell that he's yep. made a game where he doesn't want competition because there's too many games, especially indies. Uh, well, no. No, no. No. There's not know, too it's, many it's games. It's pretty blatant, isn't it, that he's just been like, oh, you know, people stealing my lunch. It's like, well, that's yeah. capitalism, pal. You know, yeah, you can't you, yeah, you yeah, wanted go, Don't blame capitalism. Well, well, well. <laughs> Yeah, it's entirely capitalists, you know, capitalists' fault. It's a free market. That's what capitalism wants. And in this free market, I chose not to play your games. I don't know who you actually are. Um, I had to look up who you were. And you're not playing, making the games I want to play. So, you know, free market and all that. Yeah, um, off your toddle. Leave us alone. Yep. And it's, it's, the reason it is, it's going to get even harder. You've got to make better games. If you want people to play your games, you've got to make better games now. Because yeah. money's not the issue anymore. It's time. Because it used to be... Ah, uh, I can't decide, do I want to play this big AAA 40 to 150 hour extravaganza or play a little bit less for this, this 5 to 10 hour niche game? Well, now you've got the choice to try both. And if the better game is the cheaper, is the niche one, you're going to play that if it's better. Whereas you're not having to decide with your wallet anymore. So the, you've got to make better games. Yep. Simple as that. Absolutely, and if they're good enough, they'll get the recognition they deserve and the sales they deserve. So yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's why I like talking up the good ones that I've played in indies because they don't get recognised because they still do. The only problem they still have, they don't have the marketing budget. So it's why, again, I like to talk them up and say, you know, I, I maybe overpraise them. At times, people may have noticed that I, I could go overboard with my praise sometimes, but it's um, I, I feel they need it some, like some of the time because they need to get that exposure it's like ecstasy the mixolumia i think should be played by more and more people because they are two of the best modern puzzle games to have come out and they deserve an audience ecstasy's on sale on the switch at the moment by the way don't pick that up 
uh, but they don't get the audience because uh, I'm not complaining. They're not Tetris. Yeah. So they're not going to get that audience because they're not Tetris or the like. So it's, you know, it, it, they need big up, but uh, too many of those games. No, I'll just play the ones I like. Thank you. Uh, if it's not, then so be it. Absolutely. I agree. Don't buy Ubisoft games though. No, <laughs> uh, you can start buying Activision soon. I don't yeah. know. Anymore. We'll tell you when you can. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not, not till we. I don't know anymore. I'm at a loss. I was going through and like going, oh, looking at some sales, going, oh, I could get that. Oh, no, it's Activision. Oh, wait, is that okay now? I don't know. No, is it okay? <laughs> not like, yet. Because it doesn't matter in terms of like what other people think. But my, probably with myself, I'm going, uh, it, it's still going to Bobby Kotick. And I don't want to give Bobby Kotick money, but he's going to get a big payoff anyway. And it's going to be better, hopefully, maybe. I'm not, 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 still not buying an Ubisoft game. I do want to try that bike one. I could pirate it. I'm not going to pirate it because I can't be asked. But I do want to play that biking one that they, they've recently made. So maybe if they sort themselves out, I'll, I'll, I'll know when. And it's just, yeah, that that's how my mind works. <laughs> yep. Well, you, you know, it's, you, you're trying to be good, aren't you? You're trying to make sure that you don't support and fund the bad people so yeah. it's worth thinking about yeah definitely yeah yeah and it just shows i don't think it matters what who you are it's as much as i'm not going to use sports direct we've been forced into it at times because it's just that much cheaper for certain bits and it's like uh i've got to draw the line somewhere yeah um i'm still eating you know i'm eating mars bars and maltesers and stuff like that i know nestle a scum yeah <laughs> and stuff like yeah. that and it's yeah. i yeah, you've got to be a hip. You can't help but be a hypocrite at times. Yeah, it's the only way you can exist in this society, unfortunately. Unless yeah. I go and live in the woods, then I couldn't play video games. So, you know. Well, that's what your Switch is for. Yeah, but you need an online connection for some of it still. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. So, I would live in the woods as long as I've got Wi Fi. Yeah. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be a slightly shorter one today. It's not very much shorter. It's, you know, still a decent conversation about. A hefty number of games but we're cutting it off there and hope you have a great week by the time you listen to this it'll be saturday and the weekend will be stretched out in front of you so hope you enjoy that if you're having any issues we always encourage you to join our discord channel so you can talk them through but it's also loads of fun conversation on there as well of course apart from that follow us on all of the usual socials we've been putting more content up on youtube as well and apart from that in the meantime stay safe and stay sane